The film begins with a seemingly innocent and beautiful girl named Kay. But as the night falls, she heads to a prostitution shop to cater to joggers. Upon reaching her intended destination, Kay meets a group of men in a room who appear to be confused about her presence. One man throws her away, indicating that they didn't invite her. However, to their surprise, Kay reveals her true identity and swiftly stabs the man who chased her away. It turns out that she is a highly skilled and brutal assassin, hidden behind her charming facade. She possesses exceptional fighting abilities and is proficient in using firearms. On that particular night, Kay is tasked with a mission to rescue a female model who is being held captive by the Yakuza. Shockingly, the man who had earlier kicked her out of the room is the very same Yakuza who's holding the model hostage. After rescuing the captive model, Kay knew she had to tie up loose ends. Any witnesses who could threaten her mission were quickly eliminated, and she fought like a ninja against the Yakuza's men. With lightning-fast moves, she took them all down before escaping with the model in tow. Meanwhile, Zora was engrossed in adult magazines when Kay burst in and demanded his immediate assistance. Although sometimes she found Zora's chicken tuft hair irritating, she knew she could always count on him. So, Zora had been Kay's driver on many assassination missions, and they made a good team. After completing their latest mission, she confided in him about her future aspirations. Despite being a skilled assassin, Kay had bigger dreams. She revealed that she was studying accounting management and hoped to become an accountant one day. The next day, Kay resumed her normal routine as a college student. She wasn't the type to isolate herself and had a close friend named Rika. But unbeknownst to her, she also had a secret admirer, Watanabe. Despite being a skilled assassin, Kay had a soft side and enjoyed reading romance comics. One day, while relaxing with Rika in the canteen, two guys took their comics. Watanabe tried to defend Kay, but ended up embarrassing himself. Later, on the bus ride home, Kay forgot to bring change for the fare. Fortunately, a handsome stranger named Terano paid for her. It was love at first sight for Kay, while Watanabe sat in jealousy. After getting off the bus, she headed to a ramen cafe. Little did she know, the cafe was actually the headquarters of her assassin organization. When Kay walked into the ramen cafe, she was greeted by her boss, Atsuki, who was also the cafe owner. However, it turned out Zura and a thug were already there, and they were discussing the unconscious thugs on the floor. Suddenly, Watanabe barged in, surprising everyone. At that time, Kay and her colleagues managed to trick Watanabe into thinking that the thugs were just drunk. After that, Atsuki served them each a bowl of ramen. While Kay enjoyed it, Watanabe complained that it didn't taste good and hesitated to finish his bowl. But she convinced him to finish it, and he complied out of admiration for her. However, while Watanabe was eating, Kay suddenly knocked him unconscious with a punch. She did this because one of the thugs had woken up and taken Zura hostage. Afterward, Kay sprang into action to save Zura, who was taken hostage by a thug. As she fought like a ninja, Watanabe woke up and watched in awe as Kay took down the thug. Kay asked for his help and he eagerly handed her a knife. Soon after, Kay used it to swiftly kill the thug, and Zura was saved. Afterward, they discussed what to do with Watanabe, who had discovered their secret. However, he surprised them by asking for a job at Atsuki's ramen cafe, promising not to reveal their identities. Atsuki ultimately accepted him, and Watanabe joined their group. Meanwhile, at another ramen shop, a Yakuza member named Michitaka was being targeted by assassins. Then, he quickly dodged their shots and fought back, taking them all down without breaking a sweat. He even paid for his food before leaving the restaurant. The following day, Michitaka wasted no time in attending a meeting hosted by the notorious Yakuza clan, the Daimagumi. The clan's leader, Sasuke, was in attendance, along with Terano, who Michitaka recognized as the stranger who paid for Kei's bus fare the other day. To his surprise, Terano was an accountant for the Daimagumi, and Sasuke had gathered the clan's top executives to appoint a successor in case he was imprisoned due to a police investigation. So, Sasuke had selected two candidates, Kunitsu and Kanoshida, for the leadership position and devised a rule where the one who brought in the most profits for the clan would become the next leader. After the meeting, Kanoshida revealed his true intentions to his men. He planned to steal the clan's money and eliminate all of the executives, including Terano and Sasuke. Then, he instructed his men to keep Terano under surveillance, warning them that he posed a threat to their plan if left unchecked. At that moment, the situation was tense, and Terano's life was in danger. On the other hand, as the power struggle within the Daimagumi clan intensified, one of Kanoshida's men, Ayabe, lay in wait for Terano in his office. However, he suspected that Ayabe and Kanoshida were plotting to betray the clan and discovered irregularities in the branch company's accounts. When Terano threatened to report the discrepancies, Ayabe threatened to kill him. Later that evening, Terano visited his hospitalized friend Kura and continued to investigate the accounts, uncovering evidence of Kanoshida's embezzlement. Meanwhile, Kunitsu's men ambushed Ayabe as he walked with prostitutes, beating him mercilessly and kidnapping him. 
Then, Kunitsu intended to use him as leverage against Kanoshida in the race to become the clan's leader. The competition between the two candidates was becoming increasingly brutal and cutthroat. Meanwhile, Atsuki, Watanabe, and Zura were engrossed in a game of Monopoly at her ramen cafe when she received a call from a client seeking the services of an assassin. To their surprise, the client turned out to be Kanoshida, who wanted Kei to rescue Ayabe and kill Kunitsu. At that time, Kanoshida had orchestrated Ayabe's kidnapping and was now using Kei to eliminate his rival. To buy time for Kei, Kanoshida invited Kunitsu to negotiate and offered him a sum of money as a trap. Meanwhile, Kei and her team prepared for the mission, now including a new member named Daria who was a skilled sniper. Once inside Kunitsu's headquarters, Kei quickly eliminated almost all of Kunitsu's men without sustaining any injuries. However, as she aimed at Kunitsu, Kanoshida revealed himself and laughed triumphantly, having successfully trapped his rival. Meanwhile, as Kanoshida celebrates his successful plan, he orders his men to eliminate Kunitsu. But just as they're about to do so, Kunitsu is suddenly shot and killed by Daria's sniper rifle. While Kanoshida praises the assassin team's performance, one of his men, Gonjo, makes a strange gesture towards Daria, triggering her traumatic memories of him. Despite Daria's hatred towards Gonjo, Kei is left perplexed by his odd behavior. As this unfolds, Terano breaks into Kanoshida's safe and steals a file, while Sasuke summons Michitaka and assigns him to a new mission. There, Sasuke is already aware of Kunitsu's death and suspects that Kei is responsible, leading Michitaka to conclude that Kanoshida hired her to divert suspicion away from himself. However, this means that Kei is now in grave danger as she will have to face Michitaka, who is known to be extremely formidable. Soon after, Sasuke received a report from Terano regarding Kanoshida's embezzlement of the clan's income through a branch company led by Ayabe. Although he was already aware of this, Sasuke wanted Terano to gather stronger evidence before taking action. Meanwhile, at Atsuki's ramen cafe, Daria was struggling to choose a new boarding house. But then, Kei assisted her in choosing a location and even accompanied her on a survey. During their conversation, Daria revealed her tragic past where her family was killed by Yakuza members, one of whom was Gonjo. Hearing that, Kei promised to help her seek revenge. As they were about to leave the cafe, Gonjo shot at them from a distance, narrowly missing them. Michitaka then intercepted them, revealing his hatred for women who kill, as he believed it was a man's job. Daria, offended by his sexist comment, attacked him, but he proved to be too strong for her to defeat. When Michitaka attacked Daria, Kei quickly stepped in to help her fight him. However, he proved to be too skilled for them, and she was thrown aside. Then, Daria attempted to stop Michitaka herself but ended up getting stabbed in the stomach. Enraged, Kei released a piece of iron from above, which fell on Michitaka and knocked him out. Kei then rushed Daria to the hospital with the help of Zura and Watanabe. While waiting for her treatment, Gonjo approached Watanabe and inquired about her condition. However, he refused to answer, fearing for everyone's safety in the hospital. Angered by the response, Gonjo threatened him, but upon seeing Kei approaching, he backed off. Gonjo then turned to Kei and demanded to know what happened to Daria. Kei coolly refused to tell him, unafraid of any consequences, as she knew that he was no match for her. The next day, Kei ran into Terano at the hospital by chance. They played a game of ego chess and struck up a conversation. Gradually, they became friends. He shared a memory with her about his early days in the Daimagumi clan, working alongside his violent friend, Kura. At that time, he handled the clan's finances while Kura managed the field operations. As Terano reminisced about the past, Kura suddenly woke up and requested some coffee. He was happy to oblige, but when he returned, he found that Kura had passed away. Grief-stricken, he knew he had to flee the hospital immediately. He had been accused of stealing money from the Daimagumi clan. Back at Atsuki's bustling cafe, Kei eagerly listened as Atsuki explained her next mission from Kanoshida. But her excitement quickly turned to shock as she learned she was to take out Terano, the accountant of the notorious Daimagumi clan. There, Atsuki had neglected to inform her that Terano was someone she knew, leaving Kei in the dark with only a description to go on. Despite this, she didn't hesitate to accept the dangerous job. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Kanoshida was grilling Ayabe about the stolen funds and data that Terano had taken. Then, Ayabe revealed that Terano had long suspected Kanoshida of wrongdoing, but the tables had turned when Terano stole the very same embezzled funds. Furious at the betrayal, Kanoshida unleashed his anger on Ayabe, pummeling him to a pulp. On the other hand, Kei embarked on her mission, oblivious to the fact that Terano had hired bodyguards to protect himself. 
Unfazed, she took them all out one by one, continuing to sharpen her skills. When she finally confronted Terano, both were stunned to see each other. There, Kay maintained her composure, knowing that professionalism was key to successfully carrying out the hit. But despite her resolve, she couldn't help but feel conflicted about taking out someone she knew. As she aimed her gun at Terano, Kay's phone rang. It turned out that Atsuki was on the line, informing her that they needed to verify whether Terano's death was necessary. However, Terano was equally shocked when he noticed Kay studying accounting, even as she held him captive. Then, she explained that she had college exams coming up and had to continue studying, even while on a mission. To her surprise, Terano offered to teach her accounting. Hearing that, Kay accepted. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Kanoshida and Ayabe reported to Sasuke about the money Terano had stolen. However, Sasuke was already aware of the situation as Terano had already confessed. Then, Terano had also revealed Kanoshida's corrupt activities, but he refused to take responsibility and blamed Ayabe instead. This angered Ayabe, leading to a physical altercation between them. Soon after, Sasuke intervened and gave them an ultimatum, return the clan's lost income or face the consequences. Meanwhile, Terano was teaching Kei about bookkeeping, but she was struggling to focus due to his good looks. Then, when Kanoshida called, Kei handed the phone to Terano, who proposed a deal. However, before agreeing, Terano needed confirmation that Kanoshida had ordered Kura's assassination years ago. However, Kanoshida surprisingly admitted to it, prompting Terano to burn all the stolen clan income without striking a deal. Upon seeing Kei leaving Terano's place, Kanoshida became even more enraged and ordered Gonjo to gather his troops to attack Terano. Soon after, Kanoshida's forces arrived and began to mistreat Kei, who was trying to leave. However, she did not retaliate immediately, but Terano came to her rescue and invited her to hide there. Then, he offered Kei a job as his bodyguard, and she accepted without hesitation. Kei proved to be an exceptional bodyguard as she swiftly defeated Kanoshida's troops, much to Terano's surprise. After their victory, she invited Terano, Zura, and Watanabe to accompany her. However, Michitaka, who had somehow survived, rammed their car, causing a chaotic chase. Then, Kei fired shots at his car, and with the help of Zura's driving skills and Watanabe's quick thinking, they were able to evade him. However, their escape was short-lived, as their car eventually ran out of gas, leaving them stranded. To make matters worse, Michitaka caught up to them and threw a corpse in front of Zura's car. When Michitaka caught up to Kei and her friends, they sought refuge in a nearby building, but he quickly caught up to them once again. Zura then instructed her to escort Terano to the roof of the building, where a helicopter would arrive to pick them up. At that time, Zura and Watanabe stayed behind to fight Michitaka, even though they knew they were no match for him. Shortly after, Kei and Terano made their way to the roof, but Michitaka intercepted them once again. Unfortunately, Kei was left with no choice but to fight him once more, while urging Terano to escape without her. Despite his reluctance to leave her behind, Kei reminded him that it was her duty as a bodyguard to protect her client. Then, Terano eventually fled, leaving Kei and Michitaka to settle their score. However, the fight was heavily skewed in Michitaka's favor, as he used a weapon while Kei fought with only her bare hands. In the end, she was badly injured and defeated by Michitaka. On the other hand, Kanoshida was determined to get his money back from Terano and eliminate anyone who stood in his way. Then, he devised a plan to first kill Michitaka, who remained loyal to Sasuke, and then target Sasuke himself to take over the Daimagumi clan. When Michitaka confronted Terano after defeating Kei, Kanoshida seized the opportunity to strike. However, Michitaka was quick to react and attack Kanoshida and his men before they could make a move. In the chaos, Terano managed to flee, but his escape was short-lived as Gonjo intercepted him and pointed a gun at his head. To make matters worse, Gonjo revealed that he was also the one responsible for killing Kura. Hearing Gonjo's confession had brought Terano to tears, but he was powerless when Gonjo pointed his gun at him. Just as Gonjo was about to pull the trigger, a gunshot rang out and he fell dead. It was Daria, who had finally avenged her parents. Without hesitation, she took Terano to a safe place and planned their escape. 
but Michitaka stood in their way, forcing her to stay behind and fight once more, though she ultimately lost. Just as all hope seemed lost, Kei reappeared, determined to protect Terano. In a fierce battle with him, Kei's fierce ambition allowed her to gain the upper hand and ultimately emerge victorious. With Terano safe, Kei and Daria hurried to meet Atsuki's helicopter. There, he thanked Kei and offered to take her to the United States, but before she could reply, Kanoshida, who had somehow survived, shot Terano and hijacked the helicopter. <laughs> At that moment, Kei was left beaten and bruised, while Terano lay writhing in pain. It turned out that Kanoshida wanted to get his hands on the money that Terano had stolen. But he refused to reveal the location of the stash. Kanoshida, in a fit of rage, threatened to kill Kei if Terano didn't cooperate. To protect Kei, Terano confessed that the money was kept in a safe. But when Kanoshida demanded the key to the safe, he had a trick up his sleeve. He placed a bomb in Kanoshida's hand and then plunged him into the sea. <laughs> As Kei watched the explosion, he felt devastated by Terano's death. Meanwhile, Ayabe was elated that Kanoshida was out of the way and she could seize control of his territory. But her happiness was short-lived, as Sasuke uncovered her plan and threatened to kill her. Shockingly, it was revealed that Sasuke was the mastermind behind all the chaos. He had orchestrated the conflict among the Daimagumi clan's executives to maintain his hold over the organization, even while in prison. There, Ayabe was undeterred by Sasuke's revelation and believed that he had contributed to his plan's success. Then, he asked for a seat at the table, but Sasuke refused to grant it. On the other hand, Kei was still struggling to come to terms with Terano's tragic death. In a final tribute to his friend, she threw a 30-cent coin into the sea, symbolically returning the money that Terano had once used to pay for her bus fare. Later that evening, a customer visited Atsuki's ramen cafe, and it turned out to be none other than Michitaka. Initially, she was hesitant to serve him, given his intimidating appearance. But when he insisted, Atsuki finally relented and made him a bowl of ramen. To her surprise, he praised her cooking and promised to return to her cafe. As the film comes to an end, Kei is preparing for his exams at university. On the first day of the exams, she receives a mysterious message featuring a picture of New York City and a slice of cheesecake. When she realizes the significance of the message, Kei is stunned to discover that Terano is alive and living peacefully in the United States. The film ends. The moral lesson of this film is that greed and ambition can lead to destruction and chaos. Our selfish desires for power, money, and revenge could make poor decisions that ultimately led to our downfall.